Hi class, so now we are going to do the muscles that move the knee. Now the knee, as you all know, is a hinge joint, and hinge joints only have what kind of action? Flexion and extension. So let's look at the these, these muscles. Oh, not flip. No, these that move the, the knee joint. Muscles that move the knee joint. So this is your worksheet. So you should have this already in front of you. I've already filled it out. Um, I'm not sure why I filled it out, but it's already filled out for you. Knee extension. These are anterior muscles. The, these are your four quad muscles. Remember, all four all four quad muscles insert into the tibial tuberosity via patellar ligament. Remember, a ligament connects bone to bone. The patella is a bone. The tibia is a bone. So that patellar ligament is connecting bone to bone. All four quad muscles insert into the patella via what all four muscles all four quad muscles insert into the patella via what muscles to bone so we know it's going to be a tendon right so that's the quadriceps tendon but just a little background make sure you understand those concepts um, and then the hamstring muscles we went over those these are posterior muscles. They are on the opposite side of your leg from the knee extension muscles. So the four hamstring muscles, these are all antagonist to the four quad muscles for knee extension and flexion. Make sure you understand that. All hamstring muscles originate in the pelvis at the ischial tuberosity. If you don't remember what the ischial tuberosity looks like, go ahead and look at that. It's huge. And all hamstring muscles insert either in the tibia or the fibula. That's why they all have little stars next to them because they all cross, cross two joints. Hip joint and knee joint. What was the action at the hip joint of the hamstrings? Remember? hip extension and these two um, muscles the sartorius and gracilis are also going to help help the hamstrings in knee flexion bending of the knee and we'll go over these a, a little bit more now just to show you how they actually bend the knee but let's start with your four quad muscles so again, I really like this website because it shows the shows the action and it shows what muscles are being utilized. You probably have all been to the gym and seen this, these upper anterior thigh muscles. These are the big quad muscles. Here his leg is an extension. The quad muscles are extending at the, the knee. So what are our quad muscles? We've already done the rectus femoris. We've seen that, that's the one right in the middle. And then we have one to the medial side of rectus femoris, the vastus medialis and the vastus lateralis. Vastus intermedius is deep to rectus femoris. Oh, forgot one thing. I forgot the S on vastus intermedius. So make sure you put the S on here if you didn't already. My bad. So let's look at these four quad muscles. Number one, you've seen this guy already for what movement of the hip? Hip what? Hip flexion. So rectus femoris was one of the muscles for hip flexion. But it, because it's the only quad muscle that crosses both the hip joint and the knee joint. So rectus femoris. And then you have the 
the medial muscle and the lateral muscle. Here is vastus medialis and vastus lateralis. And here, this, this white structure with the blue dot right here, this is the quadriceps tendon, muscle connected to bone. So remember, tendons connect muscle. We're talking about the quads to the bone. We're talking about the patella. And here is the patellar ligament connecting the patella to the tibial tuberosity of the tibia down here. So just be aware of that. Here we have rectus femoris removed because we said the vastus intermedius is deep to rectus femoris. So this is showing you vastus intermedius. Pretty easy, right? So let's go to knee flexion. So the opposite of extension is flexion. We are going to be bending the knee. I just show, showing you two different poses or illustrations of knee flexion. Do not look at the hip. You are only looking at the knee. What action is taking place at the knee? It's being bent. That is hip. That is knee flexion. Knee is bent. Knee flexion. I'm not going to go over the three hamstrings again. You can visualize how the hamstrings, which are back here, and they're inserting either in the um, the tibia and the or, or fibula, and they're going to pull the tibia or then the fibula up towards the backside, or, and they're going to give you this motion of knee flexion. Knee flexion. Easier to see here. Knee flexion. So make sure you, re you review your hamstring muscles. Oh, maybe I'll show you one more time. Just, I think it was slide number seven. Yeah. Here are your hammies. Which one was number two? This is on the lateral side. This is your BFF, biceps femoris. It is kissing semitendinosus. Deep to semi-tendinosis is semi-membranosis. So those are your three hammies. Let's get back to this picture. So the other two um, muscles that are involved with flexion at the knee are sartorius. You've already seen sartorius uh, before we've gone through that when we did our hip flexors, but sartorius passes not only the hip but the knee joint. So it's I to O, kind of a weird pulling when it pulls from here to here. The action is going to be hip flexion, external rotation at the hip, and knee flexion. So to understand the action of sartorius, just stand up. Stand up while you're listening to me talk. Now pretend you're looking for gum that may be on the bottom of your right shoe. So as you pick up your leg to look for gum, first thing that's going to happen is you are going to flex the hip. You're going to external externally rotate the hip and the knee is going to bend. You are going to flex the knee. So that is the, the motion, all three motions of sartorius. So this, this figure is trying to show you that motion, hip flexion, knee flexion, and external or lateral rotation of the hip while looking for gum at the bottom of your foot. Here's sartorius on your leg model, this long strap muscle. Sartorius is also the longest muscle in your body. You've all heard of Notorious B-I-G. This is Sartorius L-O-N-G. Where am I? Gracilis. Gracilis is also a knee flexor. 
You learned about gracilis when we did our hip adductors. Remember, your hip adductors are all these inner thigh muscles, and there's gracilis showing, shown here. So it crosses two joints, hip and knee. So here's showing you gracilis bending or flexing that knee. When it contracts, it's going to pull up because it's inserted on the tibia. It's going to pull up on the tibia and it's going to bend the knee. So hip flexion um, by gracilis. So make sure you, you fill out all your worksheets for um, the hip knee extenders and knee flexors. And hopefully these all make sense. These are pretty easy. Now we're going to go on to dorsiflexion. Remember, this is only an action that only takes place at the ankle. Dorsiflexion and plantar flexion. Dorsiflexion, remember where the dorsum of your foot is. The dorsum of your foot is going to be pulled up towards your shin. These are anterior muscles. And plantar flexion, these are posterior muscles. These are like you're pointing your toe or standing on your tippy toes. There are a lot more muscles on the lower leg. There's deep muscles, but we're not going to look at them for spring 2020. It's just too much um, with this whole COVID-19. So lucky for you, these are the only muscles you need to know on the lower leg. So let's have a look at them. Start with dorsiflexion. Here's the dorsum of the foot right here. Dorsiflexion, the dorsum is going to be pulled upwards towards the shin. These are all anterior muscles. You can feel them. If you dorsiflex your own foot, you should be able to feel these anterior muscles right here. I like this drawing because it's showing you the insertion tendons down here. First thing you do if you're looking at a model, a classroom model, you always look for the tibia. Look for the tibia. Tibia is the thick inner bone. It's your medial bone. So once you find the tibia, you are going to go lateral. Lateral to the tibia, you're going to find tibialis anterior. Tibialis anterior is right here. Then just lateral to tibialis anterior is going to be extensor digitorum longus. You can see the, the insertion tendons going into the digits. These are going to pull your digits up. And deep to extensor digitorum longus is extensor halicus longus. Remember, halicus only is referring to the big toe. Halicus means big toe. So the extensor halicus longus is deep to extensor digitorum longus, but here we can see the insertion tendon going to the great toe. Here's your classroom model. The tibia, just lateral to the tibia, is tibialis anterior, and then just lateral to tibialis anterior is extensor digitorum longus. You can follow the digits, and sure enough, they're going into the digits of the foot. Now on the model, you can barely see extensor halicus longus peeking out beneath extensor digitorum longus, but we can see his tendon coming down, and this is the tendon of extensor halicus longus. So these are the three muscles of dorsiflexion. Next, we're going to do plantar flexion. Plantar flexion, pointing the toe down, standing on your tippy toes. These are powerful muscles. Again, I love this website. This is showing you plantar flexion right here. He is plantar flexing, flexing against weight, so he's got a lot of resistance to plantar flexion to strengthen those, those um, calf muscles. The only muscles you need to know back here is going to be gastrocnemius. Gastrocnemius. Here is gastrocnemius. It has two heads, a, a lateral and a medial head, 
Here's the medial head, lateral head of the gastrocnemius. And deep to gastrocnemius is going to be a muscle called soleus. Soleus. And they are both connected to the Achilles tendon. Here's the Achilles tendon. Or the calcaneal tendon. On your classroom model, here's the back side of your leg on the classroom model. Here is showing you gastrocnemius. So this is going to be the lateral head. Here's the medial head. And here is the Achilles tendon. This white structure coming down. This is all Achilles tendon. And then deep to gastrocnemius, you can barely see it peeking, peeking out here, is soleus. But on the lateral view here, here is our gastrocnemius. You can see soleus um, better. Here is soleus right back here. Is that it? Do we have anything else? What else do I have here? That's it. So um, make sure you filled out all your worksheets and you get these actions down. You are going to learn these muscle group actions as in these groups. Try to figure out where they are, are in the front, the back, anterior, posterior, where they are. That will be a much easier way for you to figure out their actions. Instead of memorizing each muscle individually, group them the way we grouped them on these worksheets. And that'll help you a lot. So I think that's it for the leg. Au revoir. Bye-bye.